Hello, hey, hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to a special Thursday night edition of Vorpal Board. And it's special because we're joined by Gil Hova himself. Gil, how are you? How's it going? I'm, I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing great. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, Thank you. Gil has a live Kickstarter for a two player version of, I think it's fair to say, Hit Game the networks oh yeah yeah uh, you can that. and this is a two-player variant of it called the rival networks mm -hmm. um and i i believe that you kind of have described it as um sort of like an easier quicker version of the networks that you yep. can use to play with people you even have i think like kind of like an easy mode um mm -hmm. to play with people who might not be familiar with with modern board or card games essentially yep. Yep. Um, hey ryan uh yeah hey red meeple ryan um thanks for coming out and, and hanging out tonight um, so the, the Kickstarter campaign is already fulfilled or not, not no, no, already funded. Let's not get yeah. ahead of ourselves already funded. <laughs> um, you have eight days left to go. You're a little bit, you're almost to 900 backers. Um, mm -hmm. generally speaking, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, uh, we're, we just, uh, hit, uh, a stretch goal I really wanted to hit, which is the $30,000 goal, which gave us the executives module. Um, so the original networks has uh, an expansion called executives that adds all these wild asymmetric powers. So there's going to be a module for rival networks that does something similar. The powers are not going to be as bonkers and off the wall in terms of power uh, as, uh, as the base game, but they're still going to be super interesting. And every time you play with one, it's going to send you down a different direction, which is kind of what I, what I want. Uh, you know, it gives you more lenses to the game, which is always a good thing. Cool, yeah, and I think I, I think that's especially effective when you're talking about like a game like this. That's I think you target like thirty to forty minutes. Yeah. So yeah. so like being able to sit down and say, oh, okay, well, I can play this in a little different way, um, mm -hmm. is nice. And and I think people will see when we as we play it. You can you can try a lot of different strategies. You can go yeah. after different stuff in this game, and so. Yeah forcing the player to sort of like make different choices i think is is a cool mm -hmm. way to force them to kind of experience it in different ways so mm -hmm. that's that's very exciting um so you are kind of old hat at kickstarter you know i think you i think i checked and you'd done like maybe nine campaigns yep, this is um, my nine. Yep. and so does it uh does it get easier gil in some ways yes in some ways no um i mean at this point i I know what to expect in a lot of ways. Uh, so in that respect, it's a lot easier, but in some ways um, the, the landscape is always changing. And I feel like it used to be that you could be someone like me, like a one person company and go on and have a good shot at having a really big campaign. Like I did with the original networks and networks executives campaigns. And now I think in order to realize uh, in order to do that, um, I think the bar is higher now. So I, you know, it's not like it's bad for me. I can still do um, a modest campaign of like $50,000, um, like a thousand backers, that sort of thing. But I feel like the wild big successes, you know, those are going to belong to the established brands. So I don't think that door is necessarily closed to me, but it's not something I'm going to be able to hit on a game that is making its debut. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think like it, it, it's become now that you know, people have legitimate marketing campaigns before their Kickstarters launch. You know, yeah. as, as a yeah. juxtaposition, I, I was talking to Justin Jacobson from Restoration on Tuesday night and like we were mm -hmm. talking about his campaign and that thing is is massive. You know, they've been working it's on enormous. it for, for three years. They have a team. They they had a very long planned build up. They had uh, campaigns to get people to sign up for the mailing list, all that sort of stuff, right? So it's, I like that there are different that both of those are still available. Um, but you know, as a smaller as a smaller group, just like us, it, it sometimes can be a little bit intimidating. Yeah, I think it, it used to be that like maybe four or five years ago, you could either pitch your game to a publisher who may or may not put it on Kickstarter, or you can put the game up, up on Kickstarter yourself. Now you can put the game out yourself and maybe have like a 30, 40, 50,000 kickstart dollar Kickstarter, like maybe a thousand backers. Um, or you could pitch the game to a publisher who might take it to Kickstarter and have a bigger right. Kickstarter because they've got the resources, they've got uh, the, the advertising, they've got the marketing budget, you know, that sort of thing. 
Uh, they've got a team. They've got a dedicated social media person. Uh, you know, all these things that a one person shop like me, you know, at some point, you know, I'm not going to be able to answer questions because I'm out twice a week play testing my game right, <laughs> right now. Yes. Right now I'm testing the rival networks. Uh, right now I'm testing uh, the executives expansion is the thing that I'm really hammering on right now. And I'm trying to make sure that everything's falling in line. So, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's tough for like a one, a one person operation, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, people ask questions 24 hours a day. Uh, mm -hmm. because you have people asking from different time zones and different countries and stuff. And sort of the expectation is, Hey man, you're in the comments answering our questions. Yeah. So, um, when in reality, you know, I might be asleep or I might be like doing 15 zillion other things. Unacceptable. <laughs> unacceptable. <Gil. laughs> um, but, um, but you know, like I think, um, I, I, I like to think at least that these huge campaigns bring more eyeballs. I was talking again, uh, when talking to Justin, it was like, thousands of people who backed their campaign it was their first campaign ever backed right so like in th in theory that's bringing more people to back campaigns on kickstarters uh in future you know for, for the next time so hopefully it's just making a bigger audience for all of us to play in um, yeah and answering uh platinum pelvic exam uh yeah it is very intimidating to run a kickstarter okay. and uh that is a sane perspective uh that uh you know and for me it's it, it, it doesn't get any less terrifying. You know, there's still the sense of, do I dare disturb the universe before I press launch? Yeah, I think um, just the idea of, of uh, it, 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 it's like putting it all out there at the same time uh, and letting that first couple days wash of people come through and sort of, I think what's what's dangerous for creators is that like you tie up some sort of valuation of what you're working on into how well it does in, mm -hmm. in that initial push or, or how well it does in the campaign as a whole. But like mm -hmm. I was talking to you right before we went on, on the air, there are so many insane factors that are at play with every campaign. There's timing like, uh, you know, you could launch during say oath and, uh, and dark tower at the same time. Right. You no, know, I almost did, but I don't think that would have been a big deal for me because those games are all like at least $90 and minus 25. Right. right so right. I'm going after a slightly different market, but had I been going up against like, let's say just for argument's sake, let's say I'm going to make up a company that's not necessarily on Kickstarter. Let's say oink, for example, sure. Goes I hate up those guys. I hate those yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm just thinking of a company that has a really good following that puts out amazing products. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be selling products close to a price point that I am. Yep. You know, uh, and then they raise a million dollars that but then again, it's not necessarily a zero sum thing. It's not like a hamburger, like somebody's going to go buy a hamburger from either that restaurant or that restaurant, wherever they go, it's zero sum. The other one won't get it. It's entirely possible. Somebody will go to that campaign and back it and then go to my campaign and back it, too. So uh, that argument that uh, Kickstarter will not necessarily like uh, cannibalize, but might actually help you when there's a big campaign on there, there's some truth to it yeah i think and i think that's a lesson probably like video games has learned pretty well mm -hmm. it seems like uh mm -hmm. overrunner thanks for the follow um where just more eyeballs is always good right like mm -hmm. get on the store get get next to the other games that are selling millions of copies and and sort of reap those rewards but um but yeah it can it definitely you know uh it definitely can be intimidating i mean we we're not game designers so we're kind of trying to sell this kooky system um and it was very intimidating for us to do it the first time uh mm -hmm. to just get ready for everybody to come in and say this thing's not gonna work <laughs> uh well speaking of um we have a game to play don't we yeah we do so we are gonna play the rival networks i'm gonna give you a little overview of kind of like what what you're looking at here for people who are watching us for the first time you're looking at a web browser just my web browser a gill on his end sees something very similar and we're gonna play the rival networks um, that I have locally. It's actually directly to my left. Oh, there it is. You get a little bit to spy a little bit of my very messy basement. Uh, and oh, look at look at this. Yeah. I mean, come on, it's <laughs> no comparison. That's a that's a genius's work workspace. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. Yeah. Um, and so um, and so uh, I have a game physically here. The way we're going to play it tonight is um, something that people ask a lot is, uh, can you do games with only one phone? And so the way that this works is it's taking super high resolution photos and then streaming them to Gil and my browser. And if I put my mouse over these super high res photos, you can see that I can zoom in really close on the cards. 
The version that I'm playing is a print and play version that I sleeved. So you can see that the plastic there around the cards. Um, and then also you'll, you'll probably notice that on some of them, the colors aren't super bright. So this isn't, I, I just want to make sure everybody knows this isn't final, final art. There's still some placeholder mm -hmm. stuff in here. And yep. it was printed on uh, just a regular home color printer. So yep. uh, and there's so, some graphic design we're tweaking also. Cool. Um, and so that so that's how that works. I've scanned three cards in in advance. These are three cards that are pretty static throughout the game. They're just uh, the season one, two, and three award cards. So I scan those in with the phone in advance. That's something that Vorpal Board supports. And then we're going to play this way where I'm flipping over all the cards and maintaining the state. And Gil will be able to see what he wants to uh, do and tell me what he wants to do. Okay. And Brian, best of luck to your friends uh, who just got their game on Kickstarter. Yeah, good luck. It's uh, it's scary. Hopefully, yeah. It's, if you, scary, uh, yeah. it's scary, but but you know, it's always every with every campaign, like you learn a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, Platinum pelvic exam. Thanks for the follow. Um, yeah, like even if it fails, right? Like I think you um you had a campaign that was really tight for high rise, right? Mm -hmm. That that um. You know, I think probably everybody always wishes that it, all their campaigns would blow up. But I assume that during that campaign, there was a lot of learning about, like, just how to grind out a campaign at the end yep. to get it funded, yep. Um, yep. which yep. is, you know, not where you want to be, but but still a good lesson to learn. Yeah, and there was a, a lot of it is also the middle trajectory, like trying to get a little bit of bump in the middle, yeah. which is uh, which is always a useful thing to do. Yeah, trying to figure out some way to make that plateau not as mm -hmm. low. Yeah, mm -hmm. which which is mm -hmm. tough. It, you know, everybody looks at those kick track, uh, daily data. Oh, no, <laughs> don't look at the kick track. I mean, kick track. They're wonderful folks, um, but uh, they're people look at them and they expect the data. They expect the tr the, the trends to be accurate. Yeah, uh, and kick track tells you that they're not. You right. know, um, right? But I find that um, if you want that data of Backer Tracker actually has uh, from Backer Kit yeah. actually has really good uh, trends and predictions. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so all, all yeah. track does is the average number of money uh, yeah. backers you've gotten a day and sort of yeah. projects it out. So on day one, it tells you you're gonna you're gonna raise seven hundred thousand dollars. You know, yep. and you're like, yep. no, 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 no. Yep. No, and by the final day, it's gonna t it's telling you you're gonna make less money than you already have. <laughs> right. So it's it, 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 it's so weird. It's such a strange journey. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of confusion on that one. Um, okay, so so to get started, uh, to orient everybody to the board a little bit, uh, we have three time slots. Uh, that's what these three areas are called. That we're going to be uh, two rival networks filling shows, developing shows into those time slots, and then attaching actors to those shows. And by way of doing those things, we're going to gain ratings. And when we gain ratings, we start to gain viewers. And viewers is the way that we eventually uh, tally up at the end of the game to see who wins. Um, there's going to be lots of things that happen in the middle, uh, but that's kind of our general goal. Um, the way that this game starts is we both start as a... Um, what's, the, what's the name for the special star? Uh, that Pilot Season Star. Okay, or, Pilot Season yeah. Star. All right, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to flip these over. And I am the network VP... And Gil and I, is the delusional singer. Well, those are the stars we have. Those are our starting stars in our fledgling network. Yep, and there they are. So that's the delusional yep. singer. You can see um, each star has the ability to be tied to certain genres of television show. These two starting stars can be tied to that. This little star icon means they can be tied to any of the genres. Yep. So uh, we both get a star that we're able to attach to any show. And for people used to the base game, this is different than in the original Networks game. The original Networks game, you could put any star on any show, and there were a few stars that did better on specific shows. In this version of the game, stars can only go on specific genres. And so now I'm going to deal out our pilot shows. Yep. And one thing that I really like about this game, Gil, and I was going to ask you, did you write all the names? Are these, is this all Gil Hova material? So um, this, the, the pilot season shows, I took those all from the original Networks game. Ah, okay. uh, I learned from um, the executives campaign that people really like them. So I took the six most popular um, pilot season shows. Uh, we call them starter shows in the base game. And I put them in here and using the same art just because I think they're so good and they're so clever. These came uh, mainly from my friends who um, I, we, I made this epic Facebook thread, which was like, um, 
what's the worst TV show you can think of? <laughs> and uh, these are some of the winners. Uh, the remaining shows are all me. Those are all okay. shows that I came up with. Yeah, I, I do love I love the starter ones. I think you're right. I think they're very good. I like that it's it's so depressing that you're starting a network and the emergency broadcast test hour is one yeah. of the shows that you're yeah. developing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, okay, so these shows are now locked into our time slots. Um, you can see the genre in the top left corner. Um, and there's um, genres that you would expect on, on in TV shows. There's sports, there's news, there's action. Uh, there's, um, what's this one called? So, so uh, I ha I'm starting with uh, sports, sci-fi, and sitcom from left to right. Sitcom, and you're, right. Yep, and you're starting with reality, um, action, and drama. Perfect. Yep. Now, one thing to note, uh, there's a deck of stars. And in the deck of stars, there are fewer stars for reality and sports, which is a good thing to know. Oh, so I didn't actually know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, yeah, yeah. I thought that it was I thought it was going to be the same uh, number of stars per genre. So I didn't consider it's, that. Okay, yeah, and, cool. you'll, and you'll see why when we when we flop the first three uh, shows. Cool. that are going to be available. Okay. So so this is kind of the the starting set and then we flop out three shows that we're going to yep. be sort of drafting out of. Mm -hmm. And I will put these over here. And I think we will have everything on screen. Before before we started, I was letting Gil know that that Gil's game is actually you'd think, "Oh, it's it's just sort of a card game. This should be easy to play on on Vorpal board, but it, it presents some some interesting challenges mainly because it has very small text on some of the cards. Um, so like these, uh, network cards that we can buy over here, which kind of have very unique, um, skills, uh, the text on them, I want to make sure Gil can read them. Yep. No um, problem. And so this is where kind of the very high resolution stuff kind of kicks in. Yeah. That's a really good feature. Um, okay. So, um, at this point we're each going to start taking turns back and forth and the turn is going to be that we can develop a TV show, which is to take a TV show from the display and mm -hmm. then we can choose an add and star, which we would take an add and star combination from this display, and you have to take them together. So you take the yep. add and the star that are next to each other. From the same row. From the same row. So we do these two together, these two together, or these two together. And then you bring those down into your green room down here. And then you can choose at that point to attach as many stars as you want to any shows that you currently have. And you'll, you'll see once we do our first developing of a show how the points start working, the ratings points in the different time slots. But essentially, putting new shows into time slots and then attaching stars to them is going to increase our ratings, and that's how we're going to score viewers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I believe since I'm the, the number one, I get to go first. Is that right? That's correct. All right, sweet. So let's see what I'm going to try to develop here. Oh, um, last bit. We have, we have goals. So the, show is the game is played in three seasons. And um, each season, when the season ends, and eventually will trigger, trigger the end of the season, you're going to get uh, special bonuses if you can fi finish any of these awards. Uh, and so win the 8 p.m. time slot. That's the highest rating show in the 8 p.m. time slot. Uh, have exactly one auction show in your, or action show in your lineup and have two shows of the same genre in your lineup. So that's what we got to try to do during season one. Yep. And you see the rewards. Uh, the top two awards give you a, a viewer each and the bottom award gives you a random star from the star deck and that goes in your green room sweet um, now in this version of the game we are use we're going to keep our reruns and stars in front of us or in my in our case mine are going to be at the top of the screen and james is going to be at the bottom of the screen uh however in when you get the actual game uh in addition to the time slot you'll get two other tiles flanking the three time slot cards uh one of them is going to be where you put your reruns and the other is going yep there they are and the other is going to be where your green room goes so it's going to look like that it's just that this was a little more friendly for the uh verbal interface yeah just for the spacing yeah exactly yep yep, yep. um okay so i'm going to Let's see. So one thing that you, when you, when you choose to develop a show, you'll see that they also have a, a target time slot here in the top yep. right corner. And what you want to try to do is get that show into that time slot because then it's worth more points to you. Yep. And so yep. I'm going to develop... Hmm. Just as a note, the icons uh, for this version of the game, uh, it has uh, the icon and then the time slot and text printed under it. We're actually removing that number and text and just going with the icon, which is going to be a lot easier to read. Okay, cool. Yeah, and Funny. one thing one thing I will note is so like this good mace when I zoom in on it, people are probably like, I can't see yeah. the text there. Um, and yeah. and it's a yeah. combination of 
the printer is the white and the yellow are very close. Yep. Um, yep. But but, but there, I swear yeah. there is text there. And we're, but we're going to make we're going to get rid of the 9 p.m. there and we're going to make that icon black on yellow. So it's going to be much easier to read. Cool. Um, it's a funny story. The reason that happened is um, when I printed this set out on my printer, it the, the time the text time descriptions did not print on the cards for some reason. Oh, okay. it was some weird printer setting <laughs> that kept it from printing. Um, and then I tested and people and players were like, yeah, this is fine. I'm like and because we were struggling, like we were like, we can't read the time slots. We can't read the time slots. And that that accident turned out oh we just remove them uh, and it's simpler it's, it's amazing how graphic design works problem solved just get it yeah. out of here um, uh and uh, that's also a lesson to uh people who want to self-publish um or publish a game uh not necessarily theirs play test your graphic design you know don't just look at the graphic design on the monitor say yeah that looks good enough and print it print it out and test it because you never know what's going to trip people up. Yeah, that's good. That is good feedback because mm -hmm. just you, you think it's, it makes a lot of sense to you and mm -hmm. then you put it out and people are baffled by it. We're, we run yeah. into the same thing in the software world. Well, I'll do some mm -hmm. feature and I'll think, Oh yeah, this is totally very, very clear. And then mm -hmm. I'll give it to my mom or whatever. And she'll just be mm -hmm. totally befuddled. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to develop uh, this Jessica bones episode, yep. uh, this Jessica bones show. Um, I'm going to put it into my 10 PM. And yep. when I put it into my 10 p.m., my existing show, Get to Know Your Lower Colon, which is solid, uh, that, that goes down into my reruns. That mm -hmm. scores me three points. Three ratings points. Three ratings points, which then earns me one viewer. Yep. And so now I have one viewer, and then I am going to now choose my ad and um, star. And I'm going to go ahead and choose... This squeaky clean and Shakespearean. Oh uh, no, I take it back. Thumb station video game and placeholder. And obviously, placeholder is going to be an actual star. Uh, that's going to be one of the stars that we have. Fifteen slots that uh, people have uh, pledged for oh, cool. in the campaign, and we're putting those uh, actual people. We're going to get photos of them and. Uh, get them in the on a card okay that's cool so i was wondering i was wondering about the placeholder i didn't know that it yep. was going to be backers that's very neat yep yep we did that with the original networks campaign it worked great yeah that's very clever um okay so i'm going to attach this placeholder to the jessica bone show yep and that's going to get me three more ratings points which gets me up to six and earns me a second viewer yep and then that is my turn. You could attach the network VP as well if you want. I could. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll go for the third viewer. Yeah. Yep. Why not? Yep. It let's, gives you let's one more the, viewer. Yep. yep. I'll get one more ratings point, And then yep. I get one more viewer. That'll turn me into a three. Yep. Viewers may not, may not have seen it, but there is an eyeball between the six and the seven. Yeah. I'll zoom in on that. On so part. the way, yep. the way that this scoring track works is as you move your uh, cube along here, earning ratings points, Every eyeball you pass on the track, you earn a viewer. And so and, they're not evenly spaced. You'll notice mm -hmm. that uh, the first one you earn, uh, you, you start earning them quicker for a little bit. And then there's a period where you don't earn them as quick. So you kind of earn early and then it gets less earny as you go further, which I think fits the theme very well, right? So Absolutely, a, yes. A new show, you get a bunch of viewers, but then mm -hmm. as it lags on, you don't yep. gain as much viewers. So Yep, it becomes trickier to get those eyeballs. Yep. Um, so I was able to earn three total viewers on my turn. And then yep. the way that the my round ends is I take those and the game, as it will ship, has these neat banks that you drop the viewers in. Um, I don't have those because this is the print and play. So I'm just putting them. Uh, this is <laughs> this is James's banks, which are uh, empty medicine bottles. So I'm going to put it into into my bank. And the idea being that both Gil and I can't see what the points are. So at the yep. very end, we both look and we see who won. Yep. All right. All right. So now so we replenish. Your, here's your new show and a new star and a new ad. All righty. And there's my favorite. There's my favorite star so far that I've seen. The kid from the commercial. That yes. kid from the commercial. Okay. So, um. I have a few options here. You took the sci-fi show, yep. and those are two sci-fi stars. I could go with sitcom, um, and that might be safer as far as ads go. Or I could go for the reality. No, I'm going to go with sitcom because I'm building on sitcom already. So I'll take the good the good mace. Okay. 
which I believe is a it's 9 p.m. show. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'll get the middle row of stars and ads. And incidentally, if I don't like any of the stars and ads, I can always draw from the top of the deck. One star and one ad. Yep. But then you, 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 okay. are, you have to take those ones when you do that. Yes, yeah. Though, and then I'm gonna put. Uh, let's put both of my stars. Uh, no, let's just put the kid from the commercial on my uh, 9 p.m. show. All right. Uh, that puts me up to five ratings points, which gets me two viewers. I'm gonna leave my delusional singer in my green room because uh, she might be useful for something else. Okay. Cool. Uh, now, people may be wondering what these ads are for. Um, ads are useful for buying the network cards, and network cards give you all sorts of powers. Now, in the original game, um, you could get an ad on your turn, or you can get a network card on your turn. Um, in this version of the game, you actually save up your ads, and you spend them directly on the network cards. So the ads never actually go on shows. They just hang out in your green room until you spend them. Uh, how much are ads worth? It depends on the ad and the state of the game. The ad that I have, uh, Perfect Ponchos, uh, that ad is worth $2 million. Unless I have two cards, two ads, with that little two ad icon on it, in which case combined, they're worth $5 million. Uh, whereas um, uh, James's ad, Thumb Station Video Game Consoles, is worth $2 million unless he's got he, unless he's leading in the 9 p.m. time slot, in which case it's worth $3 million. And it's not enough to be tied. You've got to be leading. So right now this one's worth $2 million for me because Gil is, is far ahead of me in ratings in 9 p.m. Um, so I'm going to – if I wanted to use this ad, i got to start beefing up my 9 p.m. show. Or you can always use it as $2 million. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. That yeah. might still be useful. But, of course, you don't get change um, if you overspend. All right. All right. So are you That's good? That's my turn. Yep. All right. So your two, uh, your two viewers get banked. Now, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, Gil, do you, when you play this game, keep track of the viewers in your head? Do you attempt no. to? You don't? You nope. don't try? Yeah. I do not. I'm not. I, I would I would mess it up. I would confuse who had what constantly. So I don't, I, I have not tried to do that myself either. I think the way that you would do it is you would track your score and then you would track a delta, yeah, which is how much different your uh, your opponent has. But uh, that's a lot of work. Um, uh, so uh, Thaws, I don't know, I never <laughs> pronounces. He's my friend Mike from Texas. Hi, oh. Mike. Um, and my girlfriend is using the microwave. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, I like I like it when we get weird stuff happen on stream. We have cats and dogs a lot on stream, and I we have had oh. some ch we have had some children appear on stream as well. So. Always, well, always an exciting thing on the stream. We might get a ferret joining us at some point. We'll see. That will be excellent. I would love to yes. see a ferret on the stream. That would be our first first time that we've had one. One of them just has to wake up. Oh, okay. They're, they're both right. sleeping right now. <laughs> it's not fish, Mike. Don't worry. It's not fish. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, my turn. I am going to... We do have a goal to have it exactly one action show in your lineup. Yep. And I have Blue Detective out there, so I'm going to take yep. it, develop that in 8 p.m. So by doing so, I now have a show in 8 p.m., which gives me three points and nets me a viewer. And then I'm going to take, again, this placeholder uh, action show. And I'm going to immediately apply that placeholder actor, which nets me three more points. So I'm up to six, uh, which gets me another viewer. Mm -hmm. And now I have $4 million in ads, which is not enough to buy anything. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's my turn. Now, at some point, there's going to be an, um, a season finale card that comes up. And you can recognize it because its back is different. It's got a lighter back than the others. Uh, and when that card comes out, that's going to, it's going to go out as one of the three shows and you can take it. Uh, but I, is that, is that the next card? Up? No, it's not the next card. It's one. Oh, more. Okay. Yep. Yep. And, yep. and the rules okay. do state that everybody, when they want to, can actually look to see when the season finale is yes. coming. Yep. Um, so you can kind of start, start to plan ahead a little bit. Yes. So yes. I'm going but... to re-up the shows here and yep. my, it's my favorite season one show by far, mm -hmm. just called The Burp. Uh, yep. <laughs> which I would like to see what that show is all about. Yeah. Um, 
And it looks like it, it's kind of like the voice, but for burping, maybe? Was that the intent? Um, uh, like, like, a sing, like a singing show, but for burping instead? After a consultation with my lawyers, I'll say any resemblance to the voice <laughs> is completely coincidental. <laughs> That's good. All right. Just in case we have any corporate stooges in the audience tonight, <laughs> making sure. Um, okay, so I think you're ready to rock. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you took your turn. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, not it's just not just me. Um, all right, cool. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm just thinking if I, yeah, you've got the drama. I'm I'm gonna try to deprive you of one of those. Yeah, I'm gonna take the burp. Okay, nice. And that's a 10 uh, that, p.m. Yep, that'll go on my 10 p.m. slot. We never got to find out what was in the pockets, unfortunately. No, no. Uh, and then I'll take the top row of Star and Ed. Sounds good. And I will attach the reality TV fodder, which will mean we'll tie at 10 p.m. Ooh, interesting. All right, so you're up to seven as well. I could go up to nine if I put the delusional singer on. Yep. Um... Well, I will we're almost choose... to the end of the season, so that's where it actually. Starts I will to choose. Matter. Yeah, I will choose not to do that. Okay. I'm gonna keep keep that delusional singer in my green room. All right, sounds good. Are you gonna, and, you gonna buy anything? Uh, I I only have three, oh, so yeah. I cannot. Okay. All right, so you got three viewers going into the bank. Yep. All right. Um, okay, so now the season finale card is out. So the way the season finale yeah. card works is it's now in the show display where we could choose it. But if you choose it, you get to do your turn, but then it's over after that. So Correct. Um, if I chose, like if I said, oh, I'm in a really good position right now, I just want to end it. Um, I could do so by grabbing that season finale. Um, but, you know, I might actually just try to develop a show here a little bit. Um, I'm leading in the 8 p.m. hour, but Gil will have an opportunity to mm, put that sports show in 8 p.m. and bypass me, which I don't like the idea of at all. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to take this, uh, drama at 9 p.m. I'm going to remove the emergency broadcast test hour. That's going to net me three points and a viewer. And then I'm going to try to defend my 8 p.m. time slot here by taking Brunhilde's brilliant vacuums and this grizzled action hero. Yep. And then and I can immediately attach the grizzled action hero to my yep. show. So to clarify, on your turn, you can always attach as many stars as you want onto one show, and that uh, show that you attach to does not need to be the show that you just got, which is what James just did here. And so my, my intent is that I'm nervous that Gil might try to take over the 8 p.m. time slot, which is a goal for season one, and yep. I wanted to deprive him the ability to do so, which he might actually still be able to I do. Might st uh, I, I don't think I can take it from you, you can get to but eight, I can I try it. No, I can get to nine. Oh, can you? Yeah, four. Four, four, three, four, three, four, three, and two. two. Oh, that's yep. right. Your star is a two, not a one. Ah! Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, that's, yep, because otherwise there is a um, a first player advantage uh, without yes. that. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, so that's um, – well, let me see if I'm going to buy anything real quick here. Yep. Yeah, you might be able to now because you've got five with those two ads – uh, you are not leading at nine, but that's you still have seven, so you can buy any of those network cards. So I'm going to use the two, which are now worth five million because they're a pair, and I'm going to buy the draw the internet sensation card. Hey, and Palindrome Bard says, "Stop being mean to me." Who was it? Me? Was I being mean to you? Apparently, I didn't think so. I thought I was being very, very nice. <laughs> um, oh, look at that palindrome bard. Oh, very yep. clever. Oh, look, I'm... drab imordinilap. I like yep. that name. That's a really good name. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get the internet sensation card, and when the internet, then when, when you buy a network card, you can keep it, and then you yep. can play it uh, if you want to yep. at any time in your turn. So I'm actually gonna play this one right away, right now. Yep. So just tap it. 
uh, to show that you played it. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, because because that actually can matter at the end, right? The total number. Yeah, that's for the, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking something up on my phone right now. I'm not. Uh, I there's something I wanted to check. Okay, cool. So so I'm gonna use it, which this skill gives lets me draw a random star, and put it on any of your shows, ignoring genre. And so what I'm going to do is, of course, put that in my 8 p.m. time slot, uh, and it adds two more uh, ratings points. Mm -hmm. which gets me to 11, which nets me a third viewer on this turn, and I think puts me out of out of range of Gil, but maybe he'll get a network card that that screws me over. So we'll that's see. nicely done. That was that is how you defend 8 p.m. Yeah. So I'm going to put the three in my bank. And then I just re-up everything. Now, since the season finale card is out, we do not put any more shows out. So, correct. So this is essentially we're all rushing towards the end of the season. But I do – correct me if I'm wrong here, Gil, but I do put out a star and an ad, right? Yes, you do. Okay. And you put out a new network card as well. Cool. Okay. And now uh, Gil's up. All right. Um, I'm not going to end it because I want that sports show. Yeah. You're 100% right. So I'm going to take the sports show, and I'm going to take the retired athlete and cranky sneakers. Okay. So I'm not going to win 8 p.m. unless I get a network card that helps me. Uh, but I am going to... Um, there is Actually, there is a way that I could do it, I think. Uh, it would be aggressive, but I could do it. I will put uh, both of my stars on the sports show. Okay, okay, so, so that gets to three. Nine. You're up to three viewers. You're up to nine uh, ratings. Yep. Excellent. Okay, so now I've got an interesting choice because um, I'm not leading at eight, unfortunately. So my ad for Gangrish Co Genghis Cockroach Bug Zappers <laughs> is only one million dollars. So I have six million dollars. Um, so here's how I could do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it, but here's how I could do it. Uh, what I would do is I would spend all my ads and get Showrunner. Uh, an immediately play showrunner uh, that would give me a virtual sports show for the turn, which would bring me to three and give me the genre bonus for sports, which would give me three ratings points on any show. And ah. obviously I would choose 8 p.m. Yep. But you would have a turn. And if we flop out uh, an action star, uh, then you could just reclaim the lead for me. So I'd be spending a lot of resources to effectively get one VP, uh, which I'm not sure is the right thing to do. Uh, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend my leftmost two ads, okay. one for Cranky Sneaker and one for Perfect Ponchos, for Cult Classic. All right. Because I think that's going to help me a lot at the end of this season. Okay, so Cult Classic is the end of a season. For every goal you fail to reach, draw one random star or gain one viewer. So essentially, it inverts the, uh, the goal yes. card for you, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, and now you have... Uh, now I get the season finale. Yeah, you have to take the season finale. Uh, and you do get a new network card, a new star, a new ad. All right, let's see if I can get anything done here. Unfortunately, well, I'm already in the lead in, in the APM, so that's fine. Yep. Uh, oh, nice. I'm going to be able to go into the lead in 10 p.m. as well, which will be convenient. Um, okay. Oh, am I, have I been using the wrong, I've been using the wrong colors for me and you, haven't I? No, I mean, yes, you have. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We can easily flip those. Yeah, I'll flip them. Um, although, no, look, I, on, on certain ones I did it right and on certain ones I did it wrong. Look at that. So 9 p.m. is, yeah, I'm right. I'm yellow and you're blue because you're, yep. you're ahead of me. Um, not on uh, not on 8 p.m. though. 8 p.m. you're ahead of me. We were wrong, and on 10 p.m. we're tied. Okay, all yeah. right. So I screwed that up. My bad. No worries. Um, okay, so I'm going to take the season finale card, obviously, so I don't get to develop a new show. But then I'm going to take. Oh man, I wish I could get three out of uh, out of one of these people, but no dice. Hmm. All right, I'm just gonna take uh, I'm gonna take the cult sci-fi hero. Yep. And then I'm going to place that cult sci-fi hero onto Jessica Bones, 
Yep, which, and you're going to break that tie. And that's me too, which doesn't get me any viewers, uh, but le gives me the lead on uh, on the 10 p.m. time slot. Yep. And uh, so that is the end of the season. And I don't think, can, can you buy any, you might be able to buy it. No, you can't. You have five. Yeah, I have five uh, million. Yep, yeah, five million, just... so I can't buy any network cards. Uh, okay. All right, so we're, we're done with season one. Um, and the first thing that we do is we look at who's leading the time slots. And yes. if you are, if you lead a majority of time slots, you gain one viewer for each of the time slots that you lead in. That is correct. So I would gain three viewers for that. You are leading in two time slots because I'm leading at uh, oh, 9 Oh, yeah. PM. Sorry, 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 sorry. So I get two no time worries. slots. Yep. You, yep. You get two viewers for that. Yep. Um, and I get a random star because I am losing the time slot battle. So there's a little bit of uh, catch up there. Now, so here's an interesting thing, Gil. In the rules yep. uh, for the print and play, it says yep. to take that star face down into your green room. I'm sorry. It's I'll I'll rewrite that. Good okay. Call. Uh, it just draw the top. Face, okay. Top, draw the top stars. Okay. Good. We played it that way, but we were like, we we looked through the whole rules and we were like, is there a reason that it would be face thank, down? Thank you for catching that. Well, well um, and also you might read it and find out that I was wrong. So. <laughs> just... <laughs> well, in any event, the the wording is weird. So I'll fix the wording. Okay. Well. All right. So there we go. So you got a new placeholder star. Um, Okay. Uh, all right. So yeah, now we go to the awards next. You know, what's, you know, what's really funny, but uh, I guess it's not really funny, but my phone, I think I said something that, that uh, caused uh, the, the assistant to kick on and yep. it stopped the stream. So for a second, for a second, the oh. card didn't show up and I was thinking to myself, <laughs> why did it stop? And it's because I, 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 I said something wrong that the phone didn't. Like. <laughs> so Jeff Bezos somewhere just heard that. Um, okay, so so you got one star, I got two viewers, and now we're going to look at uh, how we did on our season goals. Okay. Uh, the tra yeah, the, the rule book says the trailing player draws the top star from the star deck and places it face up in their green room. <laughs> There's a chance I just read that as face down. Unbelievable. Yeah, like it's that, totally wrong. Rule books are no, Okay, good. Yeah. All right, good. So never mind. Never mind it. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. So uh, I did win the, the, the APM time slot, so I get a viewer yep. for that. Yep. Um, and then um, I have one, exactly one action show, so I get a viewer yep. for that. And I did not have two shows of the same genre in my lineup, so don't get anything Nor there. I. And so now I will, yep. play, I will play my network card, uh, which says uh, for every goal I fail to reach, I get either a star or a viewer. So I'll tap that, and I'll get three stars in my green room. Yeah, look at that. Oh, you want the stars. Oh, I want the stars. All yes, right. I want material. Yeah. Because <laughs> yes. the stars could turn into more than one viewer if it winds up. If like, you put them at the right spots. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yep, giving me awards or giving me time slot bonuses. All right, so let's see. Are you able to see those guys okay up there? Uh, yeah, I, I can see them. Okay, all right, good. Okay, um, all right. So then we all that stuff goes in the bank. And then yep. essentially we just clean everything out that's out there and we start over fresh. Uh, clean all the available displays, as I call them. Yep. So um, our green rooms stay the same, our lineups stay the same, our reruns stay the same, our ratings points stay the same. But anything that had been out for taking that wasn't taken goes away. I wish I could help with this, but uh, I am... Oh, no, it's totally uh, fine. Can I reach out? Through the screen, Can't. unfortunately, we don't have we don't have any sort of uh, automated arm, human arm <laughs> attachments. Uh, at well, that's point. the next level where all the players are remote and there's like a robotic arm yes. that's doing all the butlering. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do a Kickstarter for that in 2025. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think everything is cleaned up, and now we get new network cards, and we go on to season two. Mm-hmm. And for folks who are watching, I always say this when we do streams on Vorpal, like uh, we talk so extensively while we're playing. So any assumptions that can be made on timing for these games are out the window. Like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, these these go actually really fast. I think that this could be a really good like lunchtime game. Gil. I don't know. This is this, this is a 30 to 45 minute game yeah. for most players. I think it's uh, I think it's good, especially once you sort of just get in like turns can be. 30 seconds you know sometimes because you just oh, yeah. you just know what you're gonna do you know so. yeah yeah all 
Okay. There we go. All right. When I lean, when I lean against from against away from my mic, I can't really talk because nobody can hear me. Um, yeah. Okay. So one thing that we haven't mentioned, and it's probably going to come into play during this phase during this turn, is what's called genre bonuses. And you start getting genre bonuses if you develop three or more of the same genre of show. And that includes your reruns and what's in your lineup. So right now, yep. for example, I have two dramas. If I were to develop a third drama, I get a genre bonus. And for drama, the genre bonus is I get to add a mega star to my green mm -hmm. room. Every genre has a different mega bonus or a different uh, genre bonus. So yep. uh, we might have some of those come into play uh, soon because both of us have two of a couple different types. So yep, I almost got a um, a genre bonus in the first round with that network card uh, using sports. Uh, there was a network card that could let me add a virtual. Uh, card for genre bonus pur purposes and sports lets you get uh, lets you add three ratings points to any one show uh, but the timing like if it, in hindsight i would have been able to do it but at the time i didn't know if you would have flopped an action star uh and if you did yeah, which would have just ruined your whole day there if that yeah happened. that would have been a lot of resources for very little gain okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to go first because james ended the season he took the season finale card which means i start the following season uh, we have uh, a reality show that would be my second. We have a sports show that would be my third. And we have a uh, an action show that would be my first. Um, so I am going to go with sports. Okay. Because I got to get that sports show. That's a 9 p.m. show, and that's going to replace uh, my crappy uh, 9 p.m. show that's not getting many viewers. And then your your stars, correct me if I'm wrong, get discarded, right? They don't yes, the okay. stars from the show gets discarded. Now, uh, the, if one of them was my delusional singer, uh, we put the delusional singer face down in my green room just as a reminder that I went second because that's a tiebreaker. If we're tied at the end of the game, the player who went second wins, and that's the other thing that offsets the first player advantage. Yep. Uh, so then we're going to take my placeholder sports star and add them to Battle Tots. Oh, and uh, I need a star and an ad. Um, I'm actually gonna just going to top deck it, I think. Okay, and so you just earned uh, three viewers for going up to yep. nine on that one. Yep. And then you're just going to go off the top of the deck. Yep. Uh, Mediocre Gamer, thank you so much for uh, for playtesting. I believe uh, Mediocre Gamer made a version of this game on Tabletop Simulator, which I'm very thankful for. Oh, mediocre uh, gamer! Welcome to the yeah. stream. You're a uh, a table. I always like talking to tabletop simulator experts. So uh, yeah, so that's cool. That's a really nice thing to uh, to have done for somebody. Yeah, it was really really great. Uh, and I can get one more star on that show, and that's I mean I can get as many as I want as long as they match. And morning show host can actually go on battle tots also. Um, I think she'll be my pit reporter, so we'll put her on as well. And battle that gives tots. me battle tots is taken over the 9 p.m. time yes, slot <laughs> as well it should yeah um okay cool so you got four viewers out of that um and then you get a genre bonus yes i do okay so now i get to add three ratings points to any show and i think the safest one is going to be battle tots just because i'm probably going to replace the other two shows uh and also that gets me to 14 viewers which is i'm sorry 14 rating points it's another one. Yep. Um, thank you, Mediocre Gamer, about the graphic design. Um, I have the uh, I have the PNP just about ready. Uh, it's just a matter of balancing that versus the episode of Ludology that I'm editing. <laughs> um, the episode of Ludology that I'm editing, I pretty much need to finish by tomorrow or I'm dead. Um, so uh, not that I'm dead. It's just that I'd have to skip playtesting on Saturday, which I don't want to do. So my plan is to finish editing Ludology tomorrow. Uh, and then at some point sneak in uh, the new P uh, PNP uh, beta with the new graphic design. Uh, that is my that's my plan right now. But I didn't want to release it until I'd fixed the um, until we fixed the time slot icons, uh, removing the text from them uh, because I wanted people to actually be able to to test that version. Okay, let me take a look at my ads. I have I'm still not leading at eight. I have three million dollars. That is not enough. So. I'm good. Okay. Oh, mediocre gamer, you don't know the half of it. Running a Kickstarter. Um, I actually have a part-time job that I work these days. 
um, editing Ludology. And this week, my game group, the, my playtest group, uh, has actually been pretty high maintenance this week. I've had to, like, you know, pull a couple of members aside to talk to them, you know, uh, just sort of handling, making some big procedural decisions with the playtest group, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of work this week. But you know what? I, I couldn't be happier. There are so many worst things that could be happening to me these days so i'm pretty happy with how things are going yeah even when it's crazy i think you know it's like you're working in games right you know you're doing yeah. stuff that, that you enjoy i mean I, I know that sometimes when you get bogged down in the details it's like oh this is awful but it's like you're editing a popular game related podcast you're working on a kickstarter that's already funded you know like that that's exciting stuff but yeah i'm yeah. sure stressful at the same time yeah. Uh, unrelated to everything else, and especially to the Battle Tops cards that I just played, um, I'm a huge combat robotics fan. Yep. And uh, the uh, schedule for filming for BattleBots Season 5 uh, just got released. And hopefully I can score a ticket uh, and watch the filming. Uh, that would be amazing. Yeah, just... where, where, where do they film it at? Uh, Long Beach, California. Oh, okay, cool. Is where they, that's where they have the arena. Uh, and it's like they've spent, I think, at least a million or two dollars on that arena, a million or two. Yeah, it's like, really it's, cool in there. I like I, that show. We, we watch that show in my family as well. I'm a big uh, – I like the way that they've done it now where it's sort of just like – it seems shorter than it used to be, maybe? Like, it, the tournament structure is shorter, maybe? I'm not sure. Like, it seems more like an event style than, like, a whole season. They're event. much more transparent about it. Also, they dropped down to one weight class. Ah. So it's now only heavyweights, uh, except this season, uh, the excitement is they're going to allow walker bots okay. um, with weights up to 500 pounds. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Whereas the other uh, fighting uh, bots that have wheels but are maxed at 250 pounds. Um, I still think the wheeled bots have a huge advantage because their mobility, yep. but it could be really interesting seeing just how powerful those weapons on the walking bots will be. Um, they're still, uh, warned, I'm a huge combat robotics nerd. Um, they're still limiting tip speed though. Uh, so the walker bots can't spin their weapons up that fast. They can just add extra mass ah, okay. uh, because at some point, um, like you get a weapon so powerful that it would knock a bot through the Lexan and you don't want that. That's yeah, like that, the worst scenario. That would be bad to be on film. I feel like, uh, yeah, you don't want that to happen. So are you, are you just a viewer or do you, um, tinker in robotics on your own as well? Oh, I can't even, I can barely change a light. Bulb. Okay. <laughs> there is no way I'm going to be working combat rope. Uh, like this is what I'm happy to be in the audience. Okay. That's cool. I, um, I have a soft spot in my heart for the bots that have strange flying, uh, uh, Oh, the drones. Yeah. Yep. Familiars yep. The that fly drones. out yep. with them. Um, mm -hmm. just because I think like they never work. You know, but like I, no, I enjoy no. watching them, you know, crash and burn. Like I think last season somebody attached like a rake to the back of a bot and not that, that is that was three two or three seasons ago. That was Hypershock versus Poison Arrow. Will Bales attached a <laughs> rake to Hypershock and somehow it worked. He knocked out poison poison arrows. And, and uh, like it turned into like a fireball arrow. because it was oh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was yeah. spraying fire down out of it. Oh man. Oh yeah, yeah. it he blew it up. He yeah. blew it up good. It was it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. See that that's what happens when you talk to somebody who really knows what they're talking about. I sort of throw out a thing like, I swear this happened last year. And then Gil's <laughs> like, No, that happened at this time with this specific set of robots. No, but I, I do like BattleBots a lot. I think it's very cool. They've yeah. done a good job with it. I'm glad they brought it back. It is an outstanding show, and they, the the new re, the reboot is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And combat robotics is an amazing sport, and if you can see it near you, uh, like they fight three-pound bots. They're called beetleweights all the time. Oh, the man. bots you see in battle bots are 250 pounds. You'd think, oh, three-pound bots, they're not going to do much, right? Oh, my gosh, the three-pound bots are amazing. They are really powerful. Like, yeah. they really kick the... They, they throw the other bots all over them. Like they're very destructive. That's it's cool. really fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's, that's, that's kind of like, uh, watching like featherweight human fighters fight, yeah. you know, yeah. like they're super fast, all sorts of crazy, uh, you know, uh, moves. Uh, if you're, yeah, if you're, it's uh, really if fun you're to watch. a uh, MMA fan. Mediocre gamer, uh, Mike's, uh, run on Ludology is really good. There are some awesome episodes that are in your future. So, uh, you're going to enjoy it. Mike is, Mike was a really fun host. Um, he only gave us a couple of seasons before he decided he had enough, but that was that. <laughs> That's um, kind of a coarse way to put it. I like that. No, no, he, uh, that was his decision. Mike said, um, cause Mike designs from the gut. 
uh, and the show is very analytical. So he felt after two seasons, he said all he could say, and he was like, you know what? I'm done. Yeah, well, um, I mean, that's good. Like, it's good to, yeah, know, good to know, it's, right? It's really good to know when it's time. And for Mike, it was like, you know what? It's time. And now he lives out in Ari- no, Colorado. He lives out in Colorado now. Um, he goes to conventions. He designs games. He's having a great time. That's cool. So I believe it's your turn, James. I believe it is my turn. All right. So um, let's see. I'm going to uh, re-up my, my show display here. And then I need to start thinking about what the heck I'm going to do. Season two awards. We got to try to win the 8 p.m. time slot again. Yep. Hmm. Actually, all three of them are 8 p.m. time oh, slot. That's that. So that's going to be happens. that's going to be uh, our battle zone the entire yep. time. Yep. Um, okay. And then I don't have any stars, so I'm I'm beginning to understand why you grabbed all those stars, Gil. Yeah. Um, yeah. Star economy is really important in this game. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, though. Um, I like yeah. that. I like that. There's learning that I can do here. And when you and the genre bonuses help with that also, and uh, network cards also give you a little bit of explosiveness uh, with the stars. Yeah, so I'm going to um, I am going to do Poncho Academy so I can get this genre yep. bonus. Yep. Um, so I'm going to develop Poncho Academy into the 9 p.m. time slot, uh, and that sets me up to uh, start with five points, uh, which is worth two viewers, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to grab the Celebrity Chef. Which I like that the celebrity chef can go onto an action show. Like yeah, that. you know, they, they, they can, just in case. Yeah. Uh, me- Mediocre Gamer, you are 33 episodes away from my entrance, just so you know. <laughs> uh, all right, so that gets me up to uh, three viewers off Poncho Academy. And then for my genre bonus, I get to draw one random star and one random ad and add those to uh my green room and you look at that i got another action star Mm. but i am i'm gonna hold off because i think yeah you're you're way too strong at 9 p.m so yep yep i'll hold off that's yeah that's a good idea because there's there's one of each um genre in each season so there is one more action show in the works now, the question is, am I going to be able to hate draft it from you? Will I be in a position to hate draft it from you? Like, if it comes up, maybe there will be a better move. We'll see. Right. Um, uh, uh, question, Mediocre Gamer. So the delay on the board screen is is due to – that is the way Vorpal works when you're doing photo streaming. So what we're doing right now is photo-only mode. We do have a hybrid video mode, which mixes a video stream with high-res photos. The reason I'm using photo only mode is because that's the only way we can get up to um, full crazy resolution. So I'm up at, uh, I think, 3280 by 2420 or however many however many megapixels that is. That's a high amount of megapixels. Well, a low amount of megapixels because it's like eight or 10 megapixels, but a lot of pixels. So, you know, comparatively to 1080p, um, this is a lot more resolution. Um, but we can only stream those photos so fast. So we try to get to about one frame per second. Um, at this type of resolution, we're a little bit slower than that. Uh, but it isn't interaction with Twitch. It's just the way that Vorpal actually works. Good and it's not, it's not a huge deal either because uh, you, this isn't a real-time game. I can wait a couple of seconds for the screen to update. Yeah, it's it not... really depends on the game. Like some of the games you want to see people moving the pieces around and then you would use um, hybrid video. But a game like this that has a lot of text, we want to make sure we have that crazy resolution. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Um, all right. All right. So I am going to look at my uh, network cards real quick. You can. I'm sure you can buy something at this point. Um, I am going to hold off on buying. I'm okay. Gonna wait to see what happens in the next turn. All so, right, that sounds good. Season two comes up again here. Another star. Okay, I think you're ready. I think I am. So I still have just the one reality show. Yeah, you have two reality shows. Uh, so now I've got a choice. This is um, uh, I have a hate draft opportunity. So here. I only have I only have one reality show I think. 
Oh, you're right. I was looking at yeah. um yeah, I was looking at dramas. Um I think we each only have one reality show. So reality is not terrible, except that I don't really have reality stars. Uh the reality star would give me the 9 p.m. ad, and that would probably let me get a network card, which is nice. Um yeah, so there's a I, I'd rather not replace my um like my 9 p.m. show is good. There's an 8 p.m. show. There's no 9 p.m. shows out there. Um, I don't have any dramas. Um, I'm going to let you have the megastar uh, for that drama. So, I, yeah, I think I'm going to get uh, – uh, I think I'm going to get the reality show. Okay. And set myself up hopefully for a reality show genre bonus next season. Uh, so that is going to replace my 8 p.m. show. And just so people know, you do not have to place it where it says on the on the card, but that yes. gives you the extra, it gives you the higher of the two numbers here. So yep. it gives you six points right out of the gate instead of four. If you put it in yep. the wrong time slot, it's only four. But there are times when putting in the wrong time slot is the right move. Yeah, especially right. if you're stealing it from somebody else. <laughs> yeah, well, but it should make sense for you also. Like a lot of times you'll do that to steal it from someone else, but... Um, you also uh, you're going to put it in the wrong time slot just to sort of prep for something else. Um, maybe it's get a genre bonus, you know, right? right yeah. Um, that sometimes it's like, OK, I'm going to put it on the wrong time slot, but I just want that genre bonus out of the way. I'm going to get the middle row uh, okay. because I really want that. Um, I really want that 9 p.m. ad. All right. All right. So now I've got seven in ads, so I could get Vogue. Uh, we also have Audition, and we also have All-Star Cast. Um, you know what? I'm going to make a game. To, we just changed All-Star Cast. Okay. Um, so All-Star Cast is actually different now. So I'll leave it up to you whether you want to play it with the old rule, the new rule, or just discard the card and replace it. Do not play it with uh, the new rule. Like if, okay. if you change it, let's let's make it the most recent. The, the new rule is that it's – and I haven't tested this one yet. Uh, but All-Star Cast is now, now costs seven but it's capped at three stars. You can't attach more than three stars. Uh, use You can't ignore more than genres for more than three stars with all-star cast. Got it. We just found that it, it was it, – what people were hoarding and then dumping everything all in one, which, you know, it's a strategy, but it's not terribly interesting. Okay. And it doesn't feel that good to win, doesn't feel that good to lose. But capping it at three is, makes it a little more interesting. Okay, cool. Um like you're not scoring like somebody hit I think 35 ratings points which Oh gosh, just loaded up, huh? Yeah, it's it's like yeah, it, it just wasn't it wasn't that great. Yeah. Um it still might be useful for me. So there's an argument to hanging on and trying to get all-star cast and seeing if I can make that work cuz I do have a surplus of stars. Uh but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh that reality show vote collector and put her on um my my 8 p.m. show. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to get a network card. I think I'm going to hang on to my network cards. All right. We're both, we're, we're both, uh, we're both glaring at each other across the mahogany yeah. table. Refusing that's to right. buy Network cards. So that's, yep. Uh, okay. So you're done. Yep. I'm right, done. Cool. So this goes into your bank. So I'm curious for folks who are watching, how many um, how many uh, backers do we have for the rival networks in the chat? I'm curious. I'm always I'm always interested to see when people show up uh, on our streams where they are coming from. So if they came mm -hmm. from Gil or if they came from us or uh, or who are all you people out there? Uh, I recognize a lot of these names, so I think a lot of them are coming from me. Which cool. hi, thanks for uh, stopping by. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm going to load everything up. And then the next card is the season finale, Gil. All right. Uh, okay, so. All right, so I am going to go for the bonus for the mediocre Mr. Muddle. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to load that into 10 p.m., which is going to take away my Jessica Bones which I keep the network VP just face down. Yep. And then uh, discard my other stars. Take Jessica Bones and put that in my green room. Mediocre Mr. Muddle uh, puts me at five, which nets me two uh, viewers. And then I'm going to take the creepy vampire. 
And I'm going to attach the creepy vampire. And I'm going to attach... The placeholder star? I'm going to attach the, the placeholder star, yeah. So that's going to get me um, up to five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Um, nine, which gets me three total viewers. All right, and then that gets me the genre bonus, which is my first ever, actually, Megastar. There we go. So the Megastar is there, four of them. Um, is it going to stay four, Phil? Yeah, yeah. And they're all functionally identical. Okay. Um, and they're cool because they can be applied to any... They're worth three, and they can be applied to any show. Yep. Uh, so I got Longtime Star, which is good. It's a good graphic, actually. It's... Uh, yeah her holding a picture of herself when she was younger. <laughs> yeah, we took that from the original game, okay, but cool. um, that's going to be replaced. That's going to be a backer. Oh, okay. This one will be a backer. All right. Cool. The, the mega stars and the starting stars are all going to be backers. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, all right. So now I got to decide if I'm going to, what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, I have to buy something. I have way too much money. Um, I am in the lead at 8 PM, which makes my ads worth, a good amount of money, so that's worth six. All right. All right, so I'm going to go for audition, Gil, but I have a question for you. It says, yeah. draw two random stars and take no ads. Does that mean it replaces my... my... No. Okay, okay, cool. Nope, it's an addition, too. All right, cool. So I'm going to, in order to buy that, I'm using the two paired ads, which is worth $5 million, and yep. then a Krakatoa Instant Coffee, which is another $3 because I'm in charge of 8 p.m., and that will get me uh, $8 million, and I will buy Audition. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to use it now, and Correct. I am not going to use it now. Uh, so I believe that that is the end of my turn. All right. So I'm going to load my stuff into the bank and re-up the displays. So how many, um, how many, I know you have a pretty decent network of play tests. How many, um, how many non-U related play tests do you think that this has gotten so far? Uh, well, I have, honestly, this is the first time I'm playing the game in like three months. Oh, okay, cool. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I've watched people play the game yeah. twice a week. But um, I don't get to play the game because I always have other people play it. Yeah. I don't want to influence the play test through my game at this point. Yep. Um, I do have a really bad habit of being the butler in my play tests and manipulating the cards. <laughs> I need to stop doing that. Uh, that's a really bad habit of mine. Well, okay. this way you're, uh, you can't. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you have to be the butler. Okay, so uh, this is an interesting decision. I could end the season... And if there is a way that I could take 8 p.m. from you, I would. Yep. Um, most sitcom stars, um, I, d I don't believe I have any sitcom stars on my shows right now. Nope. And you have, uh, I don't think you have any sitcom stars on your network either. I do not. Because we've replaced both of our starting stars. Ace the uh, Fire, thank you for following. Uh, so that's going to be really interesting as far as that goal is concerned. Um, that's really up for grabs. So I think that's an argument to take precocious puberty and cancel the burp. So let's do that. <laughs> what a sentence. That, that, you know what? That, that is probably, the, you know, have you ever read that stat about how like uh, most sentences we say are the first time they've ever been said? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one, that one I think is for sure. Uh, that's the first time. Probably, I mean, unless it's come up in this game, before. unless somebody did it during play testing, yeah, exactly. But I don't think that's happened yet. There, there are quite a few combinations available here. Okay, I'm going to take as a star. Just want to wait for the screen to clear. Oh, yeah, my uh, hand's in the way there. Sorry. No, no worries. No worries. I'm going to take the charity and commercial mainstay and Wade Automobiles. Okay. All right. And you have, you then, have a whole bunch of stars over there, Gil. Yeah, I could. Let me tie you at 10 p.m. again by putting both of those sitcom stars on Precocious Puberty. 
And that will hopefully keep you away from that uh, one viewer goal over there. Um, and right. let's see what I can do as far as ads are concerned. Um, I have, yeah, okay, I'm going to pick up all star cast. That's an important part of my game. I can spend the potato nader and wade automobiles and Gengar's cockroach. So I'm going to spend the three of those and I'm going to pick up all star cast. All right. Not going to use it just yet. And that is my turn. All right. Sounds good. So now you have an opportunity to end the season. Yeah, so I can end it as well here. But mm -hmm. the question, of course, is can I increase my... Oh, position? before you forget, um, I do get to draw two stars as well for my genre bonus. Ah, yes. Okay. Good remember. Yeah, because that was a rea that's the reality show genre yeah, bonus? Yeah, it's the, the sitcom oh, genre sitcom. bonus. Yep, yep, yep. I just got a sitcom. And if I draw any sitcom stars, I am allowed to attach them to that show. And you did um, get one. I did. All right. New Which one Year's host. All right, let's put them on. Let's take that let's take that time slot away from you. That's gonna change your move most likely. Cause and that'll give me one more viewer. Yep. Okay. All right, that feels better. <laughs> yeah, that, that that was a nice that was a nice one right there. I picked up four viewers. That's an important turn for me. Took away ten PM from me. Yep. Dead. Now you still want 8 p.m. though, like that's important to you. I just managed to secure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Call. Yeah. So let's see if I want to end it. If there's any way you can ninja the third goal for me, that would be a that would be really yeah. good. Yeah. So. Because that's a really valuable goal, uh, having the show at the yeah, most rating. Yeah, and you're point. at 11, and I'm at 11. We're top. Oh no, you're at 14. No, I'm at 14. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I think I can get it. I'm gonna take the finale, and I'm gonna to try to. All right, let's see. I'm gonna. You're you're for sure taking the sitcom stars, so I'm not messing yes. around there. And then I'm yeah. just gonna. I already have the APM, and I'm gonna to try to steal that third goal. So I'm gonna take season finale, mm -hmm. and the first thing I'm going to do is use my audition card, mm -hmm. and I'm going to draw three stars and keep two. Oh no! Hold on, hold on. Before I do that, I'm gonna take my star and add. Yes. Yeah. Um, And unfortunately, <laughs> none of them are particularly helpful. So mm -hmm. I'm going to draw off the top and hope to pull a drama star. Have a good night, mediocre gamer. Oh, thanks. Yeah, mediocre gamer. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. Good luck getting your kid to bed. All right, so I'm top decking it. Uh, Crazy Pete's discount. Uh, what is he selling? Just anything. Could be anything. Plutonium. Oh, Plutonium. <laughs> That text got cut off. We're going to replace that ad. Uh, okay, crazy Pete's yeah. discount. I was wondering what the P is, plutonium. Yeah. Um, all right, and then I picked up an action star, uh, action slash sci-fi star, which isn't going to necessarily help me. Um, all right, so I can add five more to bit Blue Detective. Oh, wow. Yep, that's how you do it. Without even using Audition. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to use the Audition card yet. I'm going to put the longtime star and this placeholder here, which will add five. So I'll get to 16, which only get, nets me one viewer. Yep, but does get you that all-important goal. Yeah, which gets me the goal. And then um, and then I'm going to – I'm in the lead at 8 p.m., I'm gonna save my. I'm gonna save my money. All right. All sounds right. So good. that's the end of my turn. I get. Uh, I get the one from this turn, and then I. You are leading in two. Yep. So I'm gonna get two viewers from that. So you're gonna get two viewers. And you get a star. And I get one star. Sweet. Okay. And then. Um, you have the 8 p.m. time slot, so you'll get a viewer from that. Yep. Uh, I have more sitcom stars. You get a viewer. Uh, uh, by one, you'll notice uh, that placeholder that you put down doesn't have a sitcom icon. It does it uh, no. on the action show. Nope. Okay, so you're just at three. I'm at four. Oof, so I got it by one ratings point. So I got one viewer from that, and Wait, then you sitcom can... stars. I don't have any sitcom stars, right? Long time star counts as a sitcom star. Oh, also counts yep. in that count. Ah, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. 
Um, and um, I have the most ratings, so yep. I will get yep. one uh, star and one and one viewer. viewer. Okay. My area is getting nasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty full. You're having a good game so far, but I think you're. I think right now you're leading. But I think I'm in a good position. Yeah, you got a whole bunch of stars waiting there, which is which is nice. I, well, it's just three stars, but having all three stars and all star cast, yeah. it's a really nice position to be in uh, because I can I can really bump up one show and make it super powerful. Right, right at the end, you can kind of do yep. whatever you need to do, which is nice. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm putting your three viewers away. I'm putting my two viewers away, and then I'll clean everything up for season three. Yep. And that's it. Yeah, the, you get these precarious piles when you sleeve stuff because they oh, yeah. they slip and slide. You know what I mean? All right. I am not a sleever. I hate. I part. I am not a sleever either. And after sleeving this print and play, I will never be a sleever because it's <laughs> actually it's not a fun process. I can't. I cannot believe the people who sleeve. You know, games like Lord of the Rings that has like two hundred cards or something. You know, like I it mm -hmm. just the the amount of effort to do that seems crazy to me yeah plus i i actually like feeling the cards but it does make sense to sleeve glory to rome i have not played glory to rome uh it's real uh, the, the the company that released it will ne they have the english language rights to the game uh, they're okay. they're effectively out of business and, and uh, they may no not one will ever ever get that that they are not there. you can wave millions of dollars at them and i pretty sure that people have and they're not budging. They're not giving up that game for anything. Man, that's some, a bummer. It is. It's a phenomenal game. But if you play Matainai, that's very that's like 80 for 85 percent of Matainai's okay. going to row. Okay. So just play Matainai, and you're you're all, you're just about there. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the camera a little bit so we can get everything in here. Okay. Sounds good. There we go. Um, and, and you and season, so I will go first. Oh yeah, you get to go first in this season as well. All right. Sure do. Um and. Let's see. The sitcom over here is a. That's um. Uh, sorry, it's hard to tell. Oh, that's uh, 8 p.m. Have, Without a paddle is 8 p.m. Without a paddle is 8 p.m. And America's and my Got Talons is 9 p.m. Okay. Uh. So. And that would be my third reality show if I did that. Um. But no, it's not a good time for me to do that. I'm going to do Without a Paddle instead. So that's curious. Somebody just posted as me in the chat uh, that says, hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm not sure who that is. So maybe that's one of my team members. Uh, hopefully. I, I hope so for your sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, okay. So you, uh, sorry, Gil, which one are you going to take? I'm taking without a paddle. Okay. Sounds good. Are you going to develop it at 8 p.m.? Um, I, yes, I am. Uh, and I'm just looking at the ads over here. Uh, thank you, Brian, for the kind words. Um, and I will take the adorable hipster. Okay. And uh, Clem's Clearance Firearms. Uh, the ads were going to change a, a, a little bit. Like we're, we're sort of redoing a lot of the ads so that the text isn't going to cut off. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so on this print, there's a little bit of a... Yeah, there's a lot of text cut off and we're, we're going to... We're, that's still to be addressed. Okay. Okay. Cool. Adorable Hipster will go on without a paddle. That'll bring okay. us to 10. Um, and that I believe is my fourth sitcom. So that's going to get my genre bonus. I'm going to draw two stars for that. All right. Look at that. Two more sitcom stars. Yeah, they're going on. Okay. Going yeah. On. You're going to, you're going to go after that 8 PM time slot. I sure am. All right. So five more for you there. Um, brings you to. 15. You're still a little bit one behind me. I have all-star casts in my pocket. Yep. So I'm going to, I'm not going to use all-star cast yet. Okay. All right. But unfortunately I know it's there waiting for the big blast if necessary. It's <laughs> but you have audition. I mean, uh, which still means it's, it's your subject to a random draw, but uh, you've got a weapon also. Yep. And you have, you have a ton of money. Yeah. 
And I also have always dies and everything sitting there for three. So yes. I might be able to fight off the, the 8 p.m. challenge. Yep. We'll see. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, are you done, Gil? I am done. All right. It was Vorpal Thad. Oh, uh, Vorpal, yes. Hey, Thad. Thad's on the team. Thad's uh, yeah, okay. part, part of the, the Vorpal board crew. Um, awesome. Yeah, uh, uh, God have mercy on anyone who shows up and sees the board in its current state. So, if, for, if that, if you just showed up trying to understand what's happening, maybe a little bit difficult. Um, okay. It's actually not that. There's, it's not that bad. It just, it looks messier than it really is. And we're so. trying to keep it contained within this window, yeah. obviously. Yeah, so you, yeah. You, you would have more room on a real table. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, let me re up everything. But. Uh, to sum up how we got here, uh, we have three time slots in the middle of the table, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., and 10 p.m. The top half of the board is my half, and the bottom half of the board is James's bet half. So I have three TV shows with various stars on the shows. Uh, James has three shows with various stars on the shows. Uh, the shows beyond that are reruns, and those are important because if you have at least uh, three shows of the same genre between your lineup and your reruns, you get a bonus. How many times do you think you've said that sentence, Gil? That whole Quite a few. Deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to. You're making me really nervous about 8 p.m. What are the other things we're trying to do this uh, this season? Hey, yeah, it's worth two viewers now. You'll notice. Yep. Have the show with the most ratings points. And you'll notice a sports Ooh. show is considered to have two extra ratings points just for the purposes of this goal. Of the of the goal. Okay. Yes. All right. So and having at least two stars on each show is also a bonus. Oh, wow, that's might be yeah. tough, but that's okay. All right, so and, I'm I'm gonna try to um, I'm gonna try to go after this uh, this sports show here. Um, I'm really. Oh, gonna... we have our, we have our first hate draft. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna take this overstair league. Yep. And I'm gonna load it into 10 p.m. All right. I'm going to discard these stars. Discard. Or no, the show goes into my. Uh, to show my goes into your reruns. Yep. I, that is, is that is my first sports show. That is your. I've had all the sports shows wow. up until now. Okay. That's why it's a hate draft because you yeah. kept it. Yeah. I, I that, screwed that, you over there. That's um, three ratings points I could have had. So that was really nice. So I'll go up to eight and mm -hmm. I'll get three ratings points for it. And then I'm going to pick up. I'm going to pick up this police procedural mainstay mm -hmm. and just, I guess, prepare myself to just do defense at 8 p.m., mm -hmm. I suppose. That's not a bad strategy. Uh, it's crazy that I've had that blue detective out there for so long, you know, but, um, but you know, I'll keep it going. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I don't know if I'm going to buy anything. I don't lead at 9 p.m. I'm getting crushed at 9 p.m. So I'm not going to buy anything this turn. So my three go in the bank, and it is your turn. Go. All righty. Ooh, the Mandaliner. Yeah. Uh, okay. Although I guess that would be Mandaliner, right? Like. Yeah. He is mandolining some uh, some tomatoes, it looks like. That's pretty good. Uh, Dr. Procrastinate, yes. Uh, oh, that's Tom. Hey, Tom. Um, yes, uh, when uh, James told me he was from Albany, that was the first thing I yeah. said. Is, yeah. You know, the Philbany folks. Um, also, uh, Tom, one person in my playtest group in New York City uh, was working on a training game for a while, and we found out that I'm friends with Tao, he was like, oh, Sidereal Confluence is such an important game for me. And he was ready to drive up to Albany right then and there to meet Tao. <laughs> Which is just amazing. I'm like, Tao's probably asleep knowing him. Yeah, that Spielman group is awesome. You know, it was very uh, good. Just really, they get together regularly. Lots of really interesting game design stuff going through there. Yeah. I, uh, really I am no awesome. designer, but I like seeing them when they're over at uh, Barden Baker. Yep, yep. And um, I think. When Catherine Stipple was going to college up there, I think she was dropping by there. Uh, but now she's in Long Island, so uh, every so often she comes by our group. So That's cool. uh, I'm pretty excited about that. We get to play Test Flip and Gravity 
which I'm pretty happy about. Yeah, I like seeing the the shots of that on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, yeah. I have not been able to test it. The times when it's been over at, um, there's sort of like a designer night at a board game mm-hmm. cafe up here. I have not been able to uh, be there on those on those nights, which is a bummer. She's an amazing designer. Absolutely amazing. That's cool. Oh, Tao is working on an awesome co-op of a similar scale. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. Uh, so um, I'm going to make a tricky. Oh, she still co- goes up there. That's great to hear. Uh, she is. Yeah, she's so good. Um, five and sorry, quick math. Five and eight that's is fine. 13. Uh, yes. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the Handmade Tale. Okay. I'm going to cancel my 10 p.m. show, and I'm going to put the show on at the wrong time slot. All right. And then I'm going to take... um, Oh, this is a tricky decision. Um, That's Harry Hamburgers. Which is three and two. Okay. I actually so, think... Sorry to interrupt yep. you, Gil, but I think I might have made a mistake. Was sure. the Amazing Vase yours? No, I don't think it was. It's. Oh, yes. It... I think I it think was. It was. Yes. it was what you replaced at 8 p.m., I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I didn't put it in your reruns. I moved it off. Oh, no worries. No worries. So let me put it up there in your reruns. Sure. So there we go. Okay. I just wanted yeah. to make sure that that was working. Awesome. All right. So, okay. okay. So I'm going to take the middle row. I'm going to take the reality TV judge and Harry Hamburgers because I want. Um, yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to do that now. I'm definitely going to. Let, let me take a quick look at my ads over here. Um, you earned two viewers so far this turn. Yeah. Uh, well, let me definitely add my uh, square jawed actor and my soap opera star to my 10 p.m. time slot. Trying to get those two on everything, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So five more there. Yep. I might attach the reality TV judge as well. So you're up to uh, 10. That gets you two more. Okay. Um, and that gives me the lead at 10 p.m. So that's now three, five... Um, and I'm leading there, so that's eight. Oh, I could get pretty much any of these. Um, oh, there oh, that go. might I, be I just nice. refocused the camera there, sorry. Oh, thank you, yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm also saying that's nice because um, there's a couple of really good things I could get, and I'm trying to decide whether I want to get documentary or viral marketing. Both of them would be really, really, really useful. Um, oh, yeah, that, that discard. Think, well, oh, yeah, that viral marketing is really good. No, I think documentary is better for me. So I'm going to spend six. Okay. Um, so that's going to be, I believe, Harry Hamburgers and Clem's Clearance Firearms. Yeah, because you're uh, leading in, yeah, in 9 both p.m. and 10 p.m. Yep. Sounds yep. Good. So let me spend those, and I will get documentary. Okay, I'm going to hang on to that one because I'm leading in two time slots right now, but it's possible you might take me over, but it's nice to have an extra star in my back pocket because that'll synergize well with my other card. I'm done. Okay. You too, Brian. Have a great night. Hey, Brian. Thanks for hanging out. Brian F09. You know, sometimes I just never know what, you know, what, how to, how to call the names, you know? Yeah. Uh, But good to see you, Brian. All right, so four more for you, and your turn is over. Season finale is the next card, Gil. All right, so this is the final show coming out. And there we go. You probably heard me. I just knocked over a huge pile of cards. <laughs> well, as long as they're discards. They were discards. Uh, <laughs> the discarded ads. They're just so slippery when they're in these. Uh, yeah, I, I'm things. not a sleever. Now, if they could do sleeves that grip a little more, I wonder how that would work. Yeah. I mean, it might be tricky to maneuver, but current sleeves are just so slick. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, your point is valid on, like, a, you know, a game you might never be able to get again. Um, yeah. yeah. But, you know, like, uh, like if I'm playing, like, a legacy game or something, like, my Gloomhaven cards for my first character look like absolute hell. You know, like they're, <laughs> they're bent and, and the yep. edges are all busted up. But then when they retire, it's like, okay, see ya. 
Yep. Um, uh, so if you're so this turn, you may want to play audition because this might be your final turn of the game. Right. You could end it next turn. So I could end it next turn. Yes. Do as much as I can on this turn. All right. Oh man, two stars on every show. I might be able to pull that off. If if I get lucky with my random stars. Hmm. I'm actually going to I think I'm going to do develop the killing heave. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to develop the killing heave in 10 p.m., which is going to get me a genre bonus. Yep. Um, so that will first get me seven, which nets me three viewers. Uh, and we have to switch to the brains, actually. We're out of hearts. So, uh oh. Um, so we're switching to the brains. For any eagle eyed viewers out there, the, these tokens are from Arkham Horror. So they're madness and health tokens from Arkham <laughs> Horror. Um, all right, so I pick up three, and then I'm going to. I'm going to go off the top of the deck because I don't have anything I like up there. And that nets me a dashing lead, which is no help, and some money. All right. All right, now I'm going to use the, uh, the audition to draw three stars. And I have to shuffle the star deck to do that draw. How many cards are in the discard pile? Um, of the stars? One, two, yeah. three, four, five, six. If there's at least 10, we're good. Yeah, 15. Okay, good. Uh, there's a special rule. If there's fewer than 10, we have to discard stars from uh, our shows. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, there's more, yeah, there's more than 10. Yeah, okay. yeah that, that is a rule that's actually quite important uh, because uh, there is a strategy where you can hoard stars, and if you do that then the star deck gets uninteresting. And oh, doing that, okay. the discard forces players to cycle stars. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to draw three, and then I get to pick two that I keep. And uh, I got absolutely no help. So oh, no! I, I took a chance here by overloading on one show type, and that totally backfired. Um, yeah, that's that, that. Yeah, you're in a bit of a corner right now. Yeah. Um, Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm going to take. Okay. I'm just going to put that one back on top. I got two more stars. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to load the two stars I can onto the killing heave. So mm -hmm. I can load a three and a two on there, which nets me five more points and gets me to 12, mm -hmm. which just gets me one more viewer. Are you sure you don't want to add, add those to 8 p.m.? Just to keep you from bypassing me, I suppose. I mean, I'm just saying it's a possibility. Yeah. This is where the game gets really interesting. Like, um, it is... So what I was going to do, and I think I'm still going to do it, is mm -hmm. I'm going to... All right, I need $5 million. I lead at 10 p.m. so this blue orange or orange juice is worth four and then i don't lead at 9 p.m. so i'm going to use crazy pete so that's five million in ads i'm going to buy the viral marketing oh there you go that's and, how you'll do it and then i'm going to discard um the plaque blaster toothpaste mm -hmm. use viral marketing and i gain four ratings points and Which I think you can distribute any way you want. I can, yeah. But I, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, and get up to 20. Nice. Um, and gain two viewers. Now, we're still, Heiko and I, are, my graphic designer, uh, we're still talking about how we're going to handle getting past 20. Yep. Uh, one option is to have 20, point, 20 ratings point tokens, and you'll see there's space for them in the middle of yep. the, each time slot card. Uh, but the other option is we're switching to discs, and we might screen print 20, view, 20 ratings points on one in, 
one side of of the disc okay cool. so yeah the way that we had kind of been doing it here is just to like throw it out there nice. and and then yeah. that means you're already at 20 we haven't we've never done two circles yet so 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 yeah. far just the the one twenty. i'm using these tokens are from uh cryptid so mm, cool. um, okay so uh, I'm taking the season finale. I'm ending it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so the, I'm season ending finale it. Is going to Gil and I do uh, want to see that last network card though, because that's going to be important. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, that is way outside my price range. Oh, um, yeah. And ne uh, infomercial might help me though. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Yes, I will take because uh, I'm, I'm not leading at nine. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Um, yeah. Oh, if I was leading at nine, this would be such a happier world. I think you're, yeah, you're. No, sorry, right. eight, eight, eight. Oh, sorry, eight. I meant eight. I yeah. meant to say eight. Okay, let me take the middle row. I can still make it work. Okay. All right. Actually, this is perfect. Um, I don't like to hear that. <laughs> okay um so i'm going to here comes just some, some nasty combination and end move here i like it you're, okay so let's start you're leading at 9 p.m i'm sorry you're leading at 8 p.m and 10 p.m so yes. i'm behind yeah. in two time slots so i'm gonna use uh my documentary okay. um and that'll let me get um, two stars. All right, so they're just off the top of the deck? Yep, right off the top of the deck. So start with that. Okay. All right, uh, excellent. Uh, I'm going to attach the kid from the commercial and charity infomercial mainstay to 8 p.m. Okay. So it's four more to 8 p.m. Okay. Which gets you to 19 and nets you one viewer. All right. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way that I can use this productively. Oh, and I'm going to put my I'm going to put my brains in my box. I forgot about that. Put your brains in your box. Put your brain in your box. All right. You know what? I don't think there's a way I can do this productively. Uh, okay, so I think I'm, I'm just going to have to be happy with the top deck. Okay, so I'm going to use All-Star Cast, and I'm going to put my remaining three stars on at 8 p.m. Okay. So All-Star Cast goes. You pick up six more on 8 p.m. Yes. And that nets you three more viewers. Nice. Okay. Now I'm in the lead at 8 p.m. Yep. So now I can spend my migraine munition painkillers. Okay. And I can pick up infomercial. Um, and I have one star left in reserve. Oh, that's good. So I will spend infomercial and spend my last ad and draw two stars. Okay. And if any of them are sitcom stars, they're going to go on at 8 p.m. also. Okay. Otherwise, they're just going to hang out. Now, so whoever did pick up a sitcom star, so two, ah. two more. Okay. Which gets me a viewer. I'm happy with that. Yeah, an extra viewer. And whoever has more stuff in their uh, green room, stars plus ads, gets a viewer. Okay. Uh, which is me. Okay. Well, uh, it, 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 that's after the um, the draw for being behind but uh that's the end of the season okay you know what i didn't do what i should have what i could have bought another network card i didn't even think about it oh really yeah because i was leading at 8 p.m so i had 3 million plus 2 million i had 5 million i didn't even uh, think about it i could have uh i could have picked up that one for me i could have yeah so uh, yeah. Well, live and learn um okay right. so that's the end so, of the entire season yep and so i'm leading in two time slots so, so i'm gonna get two viewers, viewers. And you get a random star, which could affect the calculation of who has most um, in their green room at the Stuff. end of the game. Yep. Okay. Uh, for the awards, um, I think I get all three. Oh, do you? Yeah. Do you, you stole got eight. Let's see. You won the eight eight time eight. slot. You have the big ratings. Yep. And, and I have at least have... two stars in every show. Oh, man. Six. Oof. Yep. 
that was the big move I needed to make. Yeah, that and that was the right time to do it too because you could end yeah. the game. I, do, I, I love games that have choice and scenario. I love it because yes. I, I like that you can start to think and say, you know what? Like I'm ready to do it right now and yeah. that can upset somebody else's whole plan. Like I think that's yep. really neat. Um, yep. Okay, so you I just gave you six more for that. Yep, and you get one viewer? Uh, for, oh, for having, having the most. Yep. yep, in your times in your green room. One one measly viewer. Uh, Hi, Agent, Agent Dave. Yes, this is a... Uh, I don't know if he's saying uh, this is a new game or if he wants us to start a new game. Uh, I'm not sure. Dave, good, <laughs> to, good to see you though, man. Um, but it might just be that we've been playing a lot of uh, duplicates lately. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, like uh, during the Kickstarter, we've kind of brought back some of the old oldies but goodies. Um, oh, that's fair. Because it's easier. Learning a game... Uh, learning a game every night is kind of a kind of a, a stress. Um, okay, so you just got right. probably enough to win the game. Win the game Let's there. See. Let's see. You had a really good first couple of seasons. I was sort of in the back, uh, Let's see. and I, I'm curious to see if I did enough at the end to take over. Okay, so then I'll put mine in, and then we're gonna have a dramatic reading here. All right. All right. We'll start with you. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you've got to count it all. Yeah, that's okay. We'll First thing I do is immediately drop it on the ground. All right. <laughs> three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. <coughs> 44. Okay, that's a good score. All right, so Gil's at 44. And let's see what James did today. Uh, my, mine was not as tall as yours, Gil. I'm telling you right <laughs> now. All right. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 31 30, 44 oh, wow. to 31 that is a beat down Gil. i thought it was going to be a little closer yeah yeah well what'd you pick up like uh nine on that last turn maybe i think yeah i i i had a huge final turn yeah, so the final turn the final turn was almost the entirety of the difference um because my final turn i picked up i think one so my final yeah. turn was a bad final turn uh, yeah there's, there's like so much of this game is timing and the more you play it, the the better you learn that sense of timing and when it's time to, especially with the season end cards. Like yeah. uh, that was clear for me. That was clearly my best move. I had to end it right there. And uh, cause I knew that APM was within my grasp and I could take it. And I knew I could probably sweep season three, the, the awards. Yeah. And both, um, both times, I think I ended season one and season two. Right. So in both mm -hmm. times that gives me that turn where like, you don't really accomplish very much because you don't have a show to develop. Honestly, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. And I think in both cases, uh, you were forced into ending the season. Yeah. Uh, but there are times when you can choose to end the season and still have a productive turn. Yeah. And if you can do that, you're generally in good shape. Yep. Yep. So, no, that was great, man. Yeah, I that is the level this was, this was really cool. Um, Thank you. I had not played, I had not played the network. So this was... Uh, this is my this is my third game, um, and I enjoyed it a lot. I think it's really cool. I, uh, Thank you. I appreciate it. I like, I I, it seems when you first look at it, like okay, it's fairly simple, but then it then the decision making that is necessary is very deep. Um, yeah. And I like that a lot. I and I one thing I don't like about some games is that planning uh, lasts too long into the future, so mm -hmm. you have to have these long plans that you have to stick to. What I like about this game is you can have planning phases that are kind of short and sweet. You can do like, mm -hmm. okay, here's my plan for season one. I'm going to try to execute. And then everything kind of gets reset going into season two and you get a whole new set of goals and stuff. I, I think that's good because for me, if I have too long of a planning period, I just get totally lost trying to do all yeah. that. So. Yeah. And, y and yet you can play this game like with someone um, – uh, like, like there's actually a simple mode you can play with this game where you remove the network cards and you remove the ads yep. and all the genre bonuses are the same genre bonuses are all you get two stars when you get a genre bonus okay and that actually makes the game really simple to teach oh yeah so that's, that's cool yeah so people new to games can uh play it without being too intimidated oh that's very smart that, yeah 
so 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 that that's that's extremely smart because you took like the networks made a boiled down version for two players but then made like a boiled down version of the boiled down version right Which that was cool. actually the game for a long time was the boiled down boiled down version yep. and then i added the ads and the network cards that was going to be a separate module on top got it but it was just the better game like it was just the better experience cool so that became the canonical game uh but i wanted to leave that simple version in because um i wanted this to be to, to still have the potential that you could play it with someone uh who might be intimidated by games and it's really super approachable when you play it that way uh the ads of the network cards do make it a lot more gamer like but um i feel that was the right decision to go cool no this is great i um so definitely i appreciate you coming on and playing with us the question i ask yeah. everybody who plays is mm -hmm. did this light up the right parts of your brain when you were playing it did it feel like you were actually playing it Oh yeah. Yeah. This, I totally felt like I was playing the game. Cool. Okay. That's good. You know, like I, you know, I think in the long run with Vorpal, we probably would have decks built in digitally that we would draw the cards out of. Um, mm -hmm. because I think that would make your life a little bit easier in terms of being able to see stuff, but also give the remote player a little bit more of a feel that they're kind of controlling things, not just oh, yeah. watching me mm -hmm. put the stuff out, um, which helps people get engaged. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but that's good. I think, um, I think that this is one that we definitely can play play well on the platform. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate it, James. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Good luck with the rest of the campaign. There's a little Thank bit over you. a week left for, for Vorpal Board people. Um, go check out the Rival Networks. Uh, it is fully funded. And Gil has uh, obviously an awesome track record for uh, for building these games. So, so it's an easy back. Um, so check it out if you like two-player competitive games like this. I think this one's uh, a winner for me. And um, for Vorpal Board stuff, uh, we have a couple weeks left in our campaign. We just announced a giveaway today of a custom version of our hardware that we partnered with Thunderworks Games on. And it is a custom role player edition. Oh, sweet. Um, so if you didn't check that out, um, check it out on uh, Facebook for a chance to win that. You can just go to the Vorpal Board page and comment and share that post. Uh, we'll be giving it away next Friday. So you have eight days to um, to share that one. It looks really cool. We have photos up there on it. It comes with a copy of Role Player as well. Thank you. Oh, sweet. Thank you, Thunderworks Games. Um, so, so check it out if that's something that interests you. And um, we will be back uh, live streaming again next week. I think our title for next week is going to be The Expansion to Tiny Towns. And we will be doing oh, cool. that with um, Pete McPherson um and um that should be a good time and i believe that's going to be tuesday night um you can check uh, social media to be sure but i'm pretty sure that'll be tuesday night um as always thanks for everybody for hanging out um dr procrastinate thank you very much um for your yeah, congratulations thanks. on the thanks, kickstarters Tom. um and um we'll definitely see you next week gil any final thoughts or words or stuff you want to plug i'm sorry my ferrets were sleeping i would have pulled uh... one out I mean, I could run and get one if you want. No, you really don't, want wake, don't wake them up. I'd feel bad. <laughs> um, that's just an excuse I can say. I got to get Gil back on the stream so I can yeah, get, get a fair on the stream. Yeah, um, we'll do it. And definitely, if you're ever up in Albany um, doing game stuff, give me a shout. Cause, uh, I will. Because I'd love to shake hands. Um, awesome. So, fist bump. Uh, I do fist bumps. Okay, fist bumps is, is good. Yeah. So we can, we can like air do it through the, through yeah. the cameras. Um, yeah. um, all right, great. So uh, everybody take care. Have a good night, a good weekend. And